Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 5. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, Father, the house of the Lord is already in order. And so I pray that you would bless this word, multiply this word. Let it fall on good soil of the people of God's heart. That it would come forward mightily. And that the thief would not be able to break in there and steal not one thing, not one bit of it. Would not be able to steal nothing in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Are we comfortable weather heat-wise in here? Is everybody comfortable? Can we turn it down just a little bit or we, we, we need some more iron in here? Turn it down? Okay, well, let's turn him down. Turn him, take him down. Praise the Lord. Say amen. Revelations chapter 5. Revelations chapter 5. And that's where we're going to start at today. Revelations chapter number 5 and verse number 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel. Not just an angel, but a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof and no man I want you to underline that and no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book. Nobody in heaven, nobody in earth, and nobody under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Not only could they not open it, but they couldn't even look on it. Both in heaven and in earth and under the earth. Couldn't do it. Verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look their own. Now that's a very deep statement there. And we're going to get to that in a minute. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth unto all the earth. I'll explain what that means in a minute. And came, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Now the lamb takes the book. The lamb. Now watch this. Verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having, uh, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of the odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Look at somebody and say, your prayer is not in vain. Amen. Look at somebody else on the other side and say, your prayer is not in vain. Not in vain. Verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals. Therefore, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us. I want you to underline redeemed. Redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. Everybody. Caucasian people, African American people, Spanish people, Asian people, European people, Polynesian people, some, uh, some uh, uh, people from the Polynesian Islands and the Hawaiian Islands, every single person, all the Asian countries, all Asians are not the same. There are Chinese, there's Cantonese, there's Filipino, there's Japanese, there's Korean, there's South Korean, there's many different Chinese, Asian cultures. They're not all one group. She so said, out of every tongue and out of every 
every nation. Just like on the continent of Africa, you have many nations on Africa, Ethiopia, Nigeria, and different ones, and what have you. And they're not all the same. In some cases, they even have different dialect. They're not all the same. But here, the Lamb redeems all of them out of every nation, out of every tongue, out of every kindred. He brings somebody out of every single area. Even South America, you have Bolivia and Brazil and Peru and, 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 and all the other countries, Venezuela and all the other countries down there that are in that region. And yet God has one, has folks out of every single part of that. Now the Bible said that there was nobody in heaven and in earth or under the earth that was able to either open the book or look in the book. Then we need to understand the depth of what that statement is. Let me build this thing, please. Let me take my time and build this. He said, there's nobody in heaven. That's the elders. That's Moses. That's Elijah. That's Peter. That's James. That's John. That's Mary. That's Elizabeth. That's Deborah. There's all them folks, Noah, there's all them folks that's there. Paul, Peter, Timothy, Silas, all of them that's there. Your grandmother, your grandfather, that pastor, all of them, not one single one of them was worthy to open the book or look on it. Not one of them. And the Bible said there'd never be another man more humble than Moses and not even he could open the book or even look at the book. The Bible said there'll never be another man like him. The Bible said there'll be another man, never will never be another man as great as John the Baptist, who never did a single miracle that was recorded. But yet the Bible says he's, he, there will never be another one as great as him, and yet he could not look in the book, could not open the book. Nobody in all of heaven could open the book or look into it. Not a single one of them, none of them, not one person could open it or even look at the book. Then he said, under the earth. Everybody that's still dead, the body's still in there. That's under the earth. Folk that's under the diet that went to hell. Can't even, none of them even open the book or look at the book. Not even Lucifer himself. Nobody in the earth, present day, could even look at the book. Not Jake's, not uh, 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 Billy Graham and all these other, Benny Hinn, not Donald Smith. Not nobody, not Pastor Cooper, not nobody is found in all the generations of man able to open the book or look in it. Not Enoch, not one single person could open that book or look in that book. Not nobody, nobody. Now, some of these folk have some pretty deep resumes when you look at their resume. Spiritual, some of these folk, some of these, uh, Enoch was translated. He didn't even see death and he wasn't worthy. Elijah with a J, he was caught up in the world into heaven. He couldn't even do it. Paul, who wrote two thousand of the New Testament, he couldn't even do it. Nobody could do it but the Lamb. My text for today is the Lamb has prevailed. I'm gonna say it again. The Lamb has prevailed. I'm gonna say it one more time. The Lamb has prevailed. Now, when the Bible said the seven spirits of God, that doesn't mean there's seven different spirits of God. There's only one spirit, and that is God's spirit, the Holy Spirit. There are not seven different spirits. There are always one spirit. What you have there, you have seven different messengers that spoke that were messengers to a church age. Apostle Paul was a messenger. Irenaeus was a messenger. You had different ones. Brother Branham was a messenger. You had seven churches and seven messengers, one for each church age. So that's why seven, everybody say seven, seven, is God's perfect number. Seven is the number of perfection. Eight is the number of new beginning. Nine is the number of judgment. Ten is the number of covenant. Twelve is the number of foundation. Forty is a biblical generation. Fifty is the number of Pentecost. One is unity. Say man, somebody. Amen. So seven, everybody say seven. Seven is God's perfect number. Six is the number of man. Five is the number of grace. Four is the number of creation. Three is the number of agreement. And two is the number of unity. Say man, somebody. Amen. All right. So he said right here, amen, that the lamb was in the midst and the seven spirits of God. He said the four and twenty elders, the four, the, the four and twenty elders are the twelve New Testament apostles and the twelve 
major Old Testament prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and so on and so on. And then he said the four beasts. The four beasts are the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that's why the Bible describes one gospel as an ox. It describes another gospel as an eagle. It describes another gospel as a man. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you today. Amen. So not in all of that, none of that could open the book. With all of that, even Gabriel and Michael, who are the only two archangels outside of Lucifer that's mentioned in the Bible, even they could not open the book. Even they could not look into the book. Only the Lamb who has prevailed. Only the Lamb who has prevailed. Only the Lamb who has prevailed. Now understand this. The Bible says in Amos chapter 3 verse 7 that God revealed his secrets to his servants, the what? Prophets. And God says yet even prophets couldn't even look in this book. Even prophets could not open this book. Nobody was able to open this book. Only the lamb that was slain could open the book. Nobody. That's why he was the one that had to prevail. Clap your hands and say amen. amen. All right. When a seal is broken. Now I said all the seals have been broken. Now just bear with me for a minute. All the seals have been broken. You had seven seals. You had seven trumpets. You have seven vials. I'm not going to get into that today. But all seven seals have been broken. All seven seals. All se six out of the seven trumpets have sounded. Only one trumpet hasn't sounded. And that's the trumpet for the rapture. That's the only one. The last one. But all the other six have already been sounded. All seven seals. Because the lamb, the Bible says, has prevailed to open open the seals. Prevail means to overcome. Somebody say overcome. Yeah. Overcome. And so it says the lamb. Now he started off by saying he is a lion. Why did he describe him as a lion first? Because a lion represents power. A lion represents authority. A lion represents he's the king of all kings. He is the master. He is the ruler. He is the warrior. He is all of that. And that's exactly what the Lord was. But as lion, that's not what the, he was not the sacrifice. But as a lamb, he was the sacrifice. He was not the sacrifice as the lion. He was the sacrifice as a lamb. You don't lead a lion to the slaughter. A lion will butt your head off. A lion will kill you and wipe you out. But a lamb who's innocent, who knows, doesn't have any weapons of offense or defense, doesn't have any ability to defend itself, it relies solely, 100% upon the shepherd to defend it. Are you all hearing what I'm saying to you today? When I drop my daughter off at school, up in the hills behind the school, there's a whole herd of sheep that's sitting there. Little bitty tiny ones, little cute ones, little bit bigger ones, and they let the sheep be out there because they eat up the grass or whatever, the weeds, I guess, so they don't have fires and the like, and whatever. And I, every time I drive by and I see them sheep, I think of myself, that is what we are. But think of this also, that the Lord made himself as one of those sheep. And yet he could have been the lion, he could have wiped everybody out, he could have did it, but there was a purpose. Everybody say purpose. purpose. There was a purpose for him to be the lamb. The lion could not open the seals. It took a sacrifice to open the seals. It took a sacrifice. The lion could not open the seals. It took a sacrifice. The sacrifice is the only reason you and I are here today. If it had not been a sacrifice, we wouldn't be here today. I don't care how good you are. I don't, Brother Prater called somebody goody two-shoes the other night. I don't care how much of a goody two-shoes you are. Nobody would be here right now. It took a lamb to sacrifice and open the seal. Now, when a seal is open, when a seal is broken, that means a, a religious disturbance is getting is underway. A religious disturbance. People say, you're religious. You're too religious. This too much God. You're too much this and you're too much that. Well, I can't help it because the lamb has broke the seal. And when the lamb breaks a seal, you have to be what the lamb is. When the lamb breaks the seal, then it causes a religious disturbance. Can I talk to you today?
Amen. Now the Bible says that when the first seal was broken, a white horse came out of that first seal. The white horse represents the Antichrist. But John, the fifth John, the fourth chapter, first John, the fourth chapter tells us that there are many Antichrists in the world today. And what that means is that people have the spirit of the Antichrist. There's only one major Antichrist that will rule the world, but there are many people that have the spirit of Antichrist. Can I talk to you today? Amen. People that are against the word of God, that's Antichrist. People that say you're too religious and it don't take all that, that's Antichrist. People that say that God is dead and God don't live, that's Antichrist. People that say there is no God and these, what, my, my job is my God, my profession is my job, that's Antichrist. People that are in churches and say, why are you speaking in tongues? There ain't no tongues, that's Antichrist. People say, I don't believe in your prophecy and I don't believe in this and I don't believe in that. That is Antichrist right there. The spirit of of it. Anti means to go against. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying to you today? Amen. But look at somebody and say, the lamb has prevailed. The lamb, the lamb has prevailed. Though the spirit of Antichrist is in the world today, just look at the media and it's Antichrist. Look at the Democrats, Antichrist. Look at the Republicans, Antichrist. Look at the Independents, Antichrist. Look at the governments around the world, Antichrist. You talk about Jesus and they tell you, shut up, be quiet here, don't do that. They say, you bring your Bible to work, they say, no, put that down. Well, I'm bringing a Playboy book. That's fine, you can leave that out, but put the Bible down. That's Antichrist. They say, you can pray to Muhammad, you can pray to Buddha, and you can chant, and you can do all of this. That's fine, but let's pray to Jesus. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, can't do that one here. That's Antichrist. And the Bible says the spirit of that is in the world today. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But the Lamb has prevailed. The Bible says in Revelation, the second chapter, that the deeds of the Nicolaitans, you need to understand what that means, the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Those were people that believed in the covenant of wives. They believed you could have multiple wives, five, six, seven, eight. It baffles me today, Deacon Eddie, why any man in his right mind would want multiple women as a wife. One is enough. You got, if you got one woman, that's enough attitude, that's enough husband, that's enough fire, that's enough whatever for a lifetime right there. Why you want five of those? And I know the carnal man, well, I have one for every day of the week. Well, you crazy out your mind. Because they're going to click together. They're going to have two or three that don't like this one and two or three that don't like that. Just ask Brother Abraham when you get to heaven. See how I asked him how that worked out. With hair guy and seer. Just ask him when you get to heaven. How did that part work out? Y'all not talking to me today. Amen. But the lamb has prevailed. And whatever. And the Bible says that even God even gave that woman Jezebel. Now watch, read your Bible in Revelations, the second chapter. Not only the Nicolaitans and their religiousness and all that stuff, but then the woman Jezebel. He said, I even gave her space to repent. Even folk that's anti-God, God says, I'm gracious and I'll give you another shot. Even though you're talking crazy about God, you hate God, this and that, God said, I'll still give you another shot. I'll give you another opportunity. Even though you're angry, I've known people that have taken the Bible and thrown it in the ocean and said, God, I hate you and you never live again. And God said, that's all right. I still love you. I'll give you another chance. I've known people that have gave God the middle finger and all these other type of things and done all kind of, oh, yes, they have. Oh, yes, they have. And you got to understand when somebody gets devastating news that that somebody has died or something went catastrophically wrong, their emotions get the best of them. And when their emotions get the best of them, then people do all kinds of things. People get hurt and disenfranchised. People get let down. People get hurt. People uh, get abandoned and rejected. People have people walk out of their life. People get uh, feel like nobody loves them and don't care about them. And if God was real, why would he allow me to suffer like this? And God knows that and he, they say crazy things, but God says, I I still love you anyways because you're doing that out of your hurt you're doing that out of your anger you're doing that out of your pain nobody's saying nothing to me today amen you're doing that where you are but that's all right because the lamb has prevailed <laughs> now notice the bible said that the lamb was tattered and torn he was ripped he wasn't beautiful when I look at the lambs at the school, they're cute, they're nice, they're cuddly. They might have fleas, I don't know, but they look cute and what have you. And some of them are really kind of chunky and some of them are kind of small and everything, but they're the cutest little things and what have you. But this lamb right here, he was bloody, he was ripped, he was tore up, 
He was bruised. The Bible says they punched him in the face. The Bible says they pulled his beard out. The Bible said they stuck him in the side with a spear. The Bible said that when he was thirsty, they gave him vinegar to drink. The Bible says they whooped him with a cat of nine tails. That is a whoop with little tiny metal hooks in it like fish hooks. And they lashed it into his body 39 times because there are 39 root diseases. Diabetes is not a root disease. Diabetes is a result of something else. Cancer is a root disease. And he was whipped 39 times on his back and it ripped the flesh from his body and he was bruised and he was bloodied and he was broken and whatever. Not a single bone of his was broken, no, because if any bone was broken, he would not have been a perfect sacrifice. But yet, the Bible says right here, he's bloody and he's torn and he's broken and yet he's torn up like that but only the one, Shikobo Shata, that could open the book. Not the lion that had a pretty beard and was shining and teeth growling, but the one that's bloody, the one that's broken, the one that's messed up, the one that's crushed, the one that's been despised, the one that's been spit on, the one that's been rejected, the one that said they called him the Beelzebub, they called him the devil, they called him all types of names, they tried to kill him multiple times, and he's yet the one that could open the seals. Not, you know, it's not always what you think is what's going to be. It's not always what you think is going to be. Sometimes God will pull the okie doke on you and do something that you do not expect it to be. God will bring something out of the left when you was looking for it to come out of the right. God will bring something from behind when you was looking for it to come from before. God will bring something from above when you was looking for it to come from beneath. God has a way of doing the okie doke on you. And here the Bible says the lamb, the lamb, are y'all hearing me today? The lamb has prevailed. The same lamb that they cursed at. The same lamb they called the devil. The same lamb they laughed at. The same lamb they put down. The same lamb they rejected. The same lamb that they beat and whooped is the only one. Moses couldn't do it in all his splendor and glory. Elijah couldn't do it in all his splendor and glory. Mary, who carried Jesus in her body, couldn't do it in all her splendor and glory. Elizabeth, who carried John the Baptist in her body, couldn't do it in all her splendor and glory. John the Baptist who was, a man, who was a man that prophesied could not do it in all his splendor and glory. And the old saints that you looked at couldn't do it in all their splendor of glory. It took a lamb that was broken. It took a lamb that was wounded. It took a lamb that was hurt. It took a lamb that was devastated. It took a lamb that experienced the worst of the worst to be the one to unloose the seal. It took a lamb that was bloodied from his head to his feet to unloose the seal. It took a lamb that hung on a cross like a thief and did no wrong. It took a lamb that was falsely accused and people accused him of things he never done but the Bible says he never said one word in defense of himself because he knew I'm the lamb. I'm sent here by God and my job and my purpose is to be the sacrifice for you. My job and my purpose is to prevail for you. You may look at me as being weak. You may look at me as being a, a, a nobody but the Jesus said I'm here here to do the will ha -ha, of my father who sent me. I'm not here to do my own will. I'm not here to do what you think I should do. They said, should we get swords and overtake the Romans? He said, no, it's not that kind of battle. It's going to be my shed blood on Calvary's cross that's going to bring the victory. It is the lamb, the lamb, the lamb has prevailed. It's not your job that prevails. It's not your family that prevails. It's not your know-how that prevails. It's not your personality that prevails. It's not who you think you are that prevails. It's the Lamb of God who has prevailed. It's not your mama who prevailed. It's not your daddy who prevailed. It's not your kids who prevailed. But it's the Lamb. It's the Lamb. It's the Lamb. Clap your hands and say amen. Let me keep going here if that's all right. It's the Lamb. That has prevailed. Now the Bible says that he has, the lamb is the redeemer. And when you look up the word redeem, in the Greek, it's the Greek word agoros. And it means to buy, to, to buy, to setting a slave free through purchase. Who is that? I ain't nobody's slave. Oh, yes, she was. 
I ain't owned by nobody. Oh, yes, she was. Did nobody control me? Oh, yes, they did. Before you knew the Lord, I knew the Lord. We were slave to a world that's dying. We were slave to a kingdom of darkness, and we didn't even know where we were. In fact, you know, you're really a bad slave when you don't even know that you're a slave. When you don't know that you're bound, then you're really bound. When you don't even know that you're wrapped up, tangled up, messed up from the floor up, you're really messed up. And yet, here he is, he has set the, the slave free. My Bible tells me, he who the Son makes free is free indeed. He who he makes free. That's why the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and the violent take it by force. Amen. The pretty salvation, that's not cutting it no more. Looking cute is not cutting it no more. Having a, you know, let's say this little quiet prayer. We don't want to bring no attention to ourselves. That's not cutting it no more. If you look how Jesus became the lamb, he was whooped publicly he was made a scorn of publicly he was executed publicly what makes you think your salvation is going to be cute and in a corner we can't hide what God has done in a corner you're going to tell it you're going to tell it you're going to tell it because if the lamb has prevailed you're going to prevail look at somebody and say I'm going to prevail look at somebody else and say we're going to prevail he said he has set it, the captives free with purchase. He paid a price that you and I could never pay. I don't care how much money you got. You could win the lotto. I believe it's $560 million or something like that. And no, I don't play, but I've seen it on the news. And you could win that. And guess what? You couldn't pay for your freedom. <laughs> you could not pay for your deliverance. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Don't let me tell you something. You can have what you have and you still won't be free. When you break down and you look at these movie stars, hey amen, they got some of everything. They get the best psychiatrist. They got the best therapist. They got the best that money can buy. And yet they still talking to themselves. Yet they still having nightmares and tripping. Yet they still need this pill to get up in the morning and that pill to get up in the afternoon. But yet they still need this session and that session. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me tell you something. I'm old school. Thank God for psychiatrists. Thank God for therapists. But I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. If God get a hold of a man or a woman and save and deliver, if God get a hold of somebody, talk about going to the next dimension, you're going to go to the next dimension, all right? Because God has set you free. Clap your hands and say amen. The Lamb has prevailed. Look at somebody and say, the Lamb has prevailed. Amen. He had all type of obstacles to face, all types of trials to face, all types of issues to face. There was people that was against him and people that was for him. And can I talk to you today? There was people, everybody was against him. When he preached on the mountain, and there was about 5,000 men and, and, and anytime you got 5,000 men, you probably got double that in women and children. So you can safely say about 12,000 people there. And he began, he said, when they was hungry, he said, bring them loaves and them fishes over here. And he prayed and blessed it and there was more than enough for everybody. But the moment he opened his mouth and started preaching and said, except you drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. <laughs> That's when somebody said, see, I told you he was crazy. See, I told you there was something wrong. They weren't saying that when they was eating, but now he started preaching and said, oh, I'm out of here now. Come on, Mabel, we're leaving now. And everybody got up and walked out and wasn't but 12 of them behind him and he looked at the 12 he said well, y'all going to? They said who else got the words of life but you? I'm going to let you know something today. Glory to God go ahead and see your doctor I'm not telling you not to see your doctor go ahead and see your therapist I'm not telling you not to see your therapist go ahead and see your psychiatrist I'm not telling you not to see your psychiatrist but baby doll look at Jesus get locked in with King Jesus and let him be your therapist says let him be the one you talk to and the lamb has prevailed when you look at the lamb he has opened the seal the lamb has prevailed when you get through with all man's ability and you get through doing it man's way look to Jesus look to Jesus look to Jesus clap your hands and say amen Redeemed 
the redeemed man and brought him back from what Satan had done. Let's read this. St. John. Can we read St. John? Let us read St. John, the 19th chapter, and see what the Bible says here. Hallelujah to Jesus. It's time. Hallelujah. We're trying to get modern and everything, and we need to go back to some old stuff. Hallelujah to Jesus. We, we really do. We need to go back to shutting in and knocking in. Yes, we do. I'm too tired. I got to get up and go to work in the morning. What they got to do with it? The Lord had to multiply your hours and give you strength in your hours. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? All right. Uh, what did I say? St. John? Is that what I said? St. John 19? Then I, that's what I said. That's a wonderful thing. Let's see here. You know what? Bless my heart. I meant Luke 19. Luke 19. That's what I meant. Praise God. Luke 19. Hallelujah. Somebody say help the preacher. All right. Hallelujah. Luke 19 and verse number 9 says this. And Jesus said unto him, this is this day. Everybody say this day. This day. Because somebody say this day. This day. Not tomorrow, but this day. Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. He was talking to Zacharias here, a publican. But he said, this day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. Well, he's a publican. That's all right. He's still the son of Abraham. Well, they're not one of us. That's all right. He's still the son of Abraham. Well, they don't eat like us and talk like us. That's all right. He's still the son of Abraham. Verse 10. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that was, was lost. The devil had pulled an okie doke back in the day of Genesis. The devil had deceived. The devil had lied. The Bible said the devil can't even tell the truth even if he wanted to tell the truth. He was a liar from the beginning and he's a liar to this day. The devil is a liar. He's a thief. He come to rob. He come to steal. He come to destroy. He come to take everything that God has done. But the Bible says, Jesus said, this day. Ha! Glory to God. That's why when Jesus stepped on the sea, when the Lord stepped on the sea, everything the devil has manipulated, everything the devil has destroyed, everything the devil has pulled down, everything the devil has messed over, when Jesus stepped on the sea, not a church experience, not a religious experience, not a people experience, but a God experience. That's why somebody that might have been smoking 12 packs of cigarettes a day, but when they meet the Lord Jesus Christ, they say poof, poof, and they throw it down. No, they didn't go to AA, AAA, AA, 7A. No, they didn't do 12 step, 15 step, 19 step. No, they didn't do that. But they said this day, Shanda Rabo Shanda. I didn't go to a therapy group. I didn't go to a therapy session. I didn't go to none of that. But I met the lamb that has prevailed. <laughs> I went to a meeting one night and my heart was not right. But something got a hold of me. I went in there drunk and told I went in there high and messed up. I went in there messing with women and messing with men. But something got a hold of me. And I'm not the same person I used to be. I went in there. I was lost. And I came out found. I went in there tore up. And I came out strong. You don't know like I know. I have met the lamb. And the lamb has changed me. The lamb has prevailed. The lamb has prevailed. Even my life. I'm not the same anymore. I may look the same. I may sound the same. But something on the inside is working on the outside. And I, 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 a change in my life. Clap your hands and say amen. Look at somebody say the devil is a lie. I'm going to say it again. The devil is a lie. He's stole, he's robbed, he's took, he's kidnapped, he's hoodwinked, he's bamboozled. But this day, Shamnalabosha, the lamb has prevailed. He's stolen long enough, he's robbed long enough, he's taken long enough. It's time to say, get back, get back, get back, Jack, and don't come back no more, no more. It's time to stand in your faith, stand in your power, stand in your anointing, stand. Because the lamb, look at somebody say, the lamb. 
Come on, say it. The lamb has prevailed. I don't have to be sick no more. I don't have to be broke no more. The lamb has prevailed. Clap your little bitty hands and give him a praise. Turn it to Revelations. Turn it to Revelations. Hallelujah to Jesus. And let's see what the Bible say. Turn it to Revelation. Hallelujah. Go back to testifying like we used to testify. I'm saved, sanctified. Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I got Jesus on my mind. And I'm running for my life. I'm not running from the drug man. I'm not running from the drug woman. But I'm running from what I used to be. I'm running to who I'm going to be. I'm not running from fear, but I'm running for my life. You don't know like I know. You couldn't tell it like I tell it. What the Lord has done for me. This is the day that my deliverance came. This is the day that my breakthrough came. This is the day that I got delivered. I'm running for my life. Clap your hands and give it a praise. What did I say? Revelations? All right. Let me get there. Say amen, somebody. Revelations, the 12th chapter. And let's see what the Bible says. Look at somebody say, the Lamb, the lamb has prevailed. Them seals is opened. He opened every one of them seals. Them seals is open. That's done. And now, it's time to get down now. Look at somebody say, it's time to get down now. All right. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Uh-huh. There was war in heaven. There had been an invasion, and we got to get the invasion out. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Satan said in Isaiah, I'm going to come and raise my kingdom above his kingdom. I'm going to be as the most high God. I'm invading, and I'm bringing an army with him. And God said, oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Michael and the angels handle business. Now he said, Michael and his angels. It didn't say all the angels. It just said, Michael and his angels. Can somebody give me a little cough or something, please? Amen. And uh, fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. There was no more place. They fought and they contended, but there was no more place for them in heaven, in meaning the devil and his angels. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And the dragon, oh Lord, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent and called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. They lost the fight. Look at somebody and say, they lost the fight. Look at somebody say they lost the fight. They lost. Amen. They was cast out and they had to get out. And the, the, the angel, the, Michael and his angel said, y'all got to go. And so they put him out. They put him out. And I heard a loud voice saying, heaven. I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which it's all right which which accused them before our God day and night and they and then watch this and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death ladies and gentlemen let me tell you something there was a fight one time and the fight was in heaven and there was a battle and the devil lost his mind. He said, I'm coming up into hell and then I'm coming up into heaven and I'm going to take over heaven. I'm going to 
going to put my throne next to God's throne. And I'm going to be like God. And I'm going to rule like God. And the Lord said, oh, you stepped all the way out your mind, haven't you? You done went buck wild crazy this time. You already was acting a fool because you deceived the nations. But now you really done got stupid now. And he said, hey, Michael. Michael said, yes, sir. He said, go handle the business over there. And by the way, take a couple of angels with you. Michael stepped on the scene and said, man, is you out of your mind? Who are you to challenge my God? I'm putting that part in here. Who are you to challenge my God like this? God, you don't have to take care of this one. I got this. And Bible said there was war in heaven. There was confrontation in heaven. And the devil could not win the fight. The devil could not win the battle. The devil could not win the struggle. The devil could not prevail. And then the Bible says, Amen. He was defeated. He was cast out and his angels. It's one thing to lose a fight, but it's another thing to get your butt kicked and get kicked out. So God said, not only am I going to whoop you, not only are you going to lose, I'm going to kick your hind parts out of here. And when he got kicked out, my God, today, the man was standing there ready, ready to shed his blood. Now all this took place before you and I ever took a breath. And the lamb was already there saying, Lord, prepare me a body. I'm ready to be a sacrifice because the devil has come down now. He's mad because he lost in heaven. He's mad because he lost in heaven. So now he's come down to earth and he's come down to try to rob and steal and destroy. But the devil is alive. Look at somebody say, the devil is alive. Come on, the devil is alive. Yeah, the devil is alive. That's why the war was already fought. Now it's your time. It's your day. It's your season. It's your moment. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm serving notice on you today. The lamb has prevailed. The lamb is not going to prevail. The lamb may not prevail, but the lamb has prevailed. The lamb wears the victor's belt. The lamb wears the trophy. The lamb is the one that won. The devil has lost. That's why he said, why did you come to destroy us before our time? Because I know that I know that my time is over. The lamb has prevailed. Just two people to say the lamb has prevailed. Just two people to say the lamb has prevailed. Come on, touch three people and say, the Lamb has prevailed. I don't know if you feel that one right there, but I'm feeling that one right there. Next time you start to go through, say, the Lamb has prevailed. Next time your body is racking with pain, lift your hand and say, the Lamb has prevailed. Next time you don't, your money is funny, lift your hand and say, the Lamb has prevailed. Next time you feel lonely, lift your hand and say, the Lamb has prevailed. Next time you feel like everybody's forgotten about you, lift your hand and say, the Lamb has prevailed. Next time you're in your bed and you're alone and your bed is cold, lift your hand and say, the Lamb has prevailed. Next time the devil is telling you that don't nobody understand you, don't nobody care about you, don't nobody love you. You uh, lift your little bitty hand uh, and say the lamb has prevailed. Uh, next time your body's racking with pain uh, and it doesn't seem like it's gonna get any better, doesn't seem like what the doctors say is working. Lift your hand and say the lamb has prevailed. Uh, next time your loved one uh, is not acting right, your loved one is backsliding, your loved one uh, is stepping out their mind. Lift your hand and say the lamb has prevailed. Look at somebody and say, you better watch out. Come on, look at somebody and say, you better watch out. The lamb has prevailed. The Bible says in 10, and I heard a loud voice. She got that a big mouth. <laughs> he said, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation. He told in Luke 9, he said, this day. Here he says, now. Everybody say, now. God is a right now God. God is not a late God. God is not an overdue God. God is not a behind God. God is not a God that forgets. God is not absent-minded. God don't have Alzheimer's. God don't have dementia. God don't forget. God is right now. Right now. In the midst of my stuff. Right now. In the midst of my problem. Right now. In the midst of my life. Right now. In the midst of what I'm going through right now, clap your hands and say, 
Amen. Say it with me. The Lamb has prevailed. Lift your hand and say that. The Lamb has prevailed. Salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. And for the accuser, you know the devil don't ever want to say nothing good about you. Y'all know that? The devil don't ever want to say nothing good about you. The devil don't have nothing to say. If the devil says something good about you, you better watch out. That means you're doing something wrong there. If the devil is singing your praises, you're in the wrong place then. He said he's the accuser of your brethren. Of our brother is cast. Up. He likes to cast uh, accusation against people. He likes to tear people down. He likes to say, "See, God, I told you there was a mess. Look at him." And the Lamb says, "That's all right. I have prevailed." Yeah. When you slipped up on the job, when you slipped up at home, and you watched something that you shouldn't have watched, and the devil says, "See, I told you. Look at him. They're fools. See, look at him right there." The Lamb says, "That's all right." I prevailed. Yeah. Uh, when they said a word, uh, the Bible said, don't let no guile come out your mouth. But you let a, ba a bad word slip out. And, and you didn't mean it, but it slipped out. And then the Lord, the devil said, see, they cursed right there. You tell them don't do that. And then the Lord said, that's all right. The lamb has prevailed. Yeah. Uh, they, the lamb has prevailed. You, and then the Bible, that's why the Bible says in Romans, the eighth chapter, there is therefore now no con my God, today, no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. I know a long time ago, ladies and gentlemen, that you got to learn how to forgive yourself because God has already forgiven you. You got to learn how to clean yourself up because God has already cleaned you up. You got to learn how to pick yourself up because God has already picked you up. And the devil try to condemn you and try to put you down. And you say, well, yeah, but I tripped and I slipped. And God said, that's fine. Not the fact that you tripped and slipped is fine, but the fact that you repented and got it right, that's fine. And the accuser of the brother is cast down. And the lamb has prevailed. All you got to do is pick yourself up, get yourself together and say, Lord, help me. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Lord, help me. I'm struggling right now. But God, I know if I put my hand in your hand, if I trust you, that you're going to bring me out of this mess. I know if I surrender to you, you're going to bring me through this. Don't nobody know what I'm talking about today. But just begin to mess up and you understand what I'm saying. Clap your hands and say amen. Can I talk to you today? Turn it to St. John. And let's see what the Bible says. St. John now. And let's see what the word of God says. The first chapter. The first chapter. I know they don't preach like this no more about deliverance. But guess what? God's still a deliverer. Amen. Hey man, I know they want to tell you about your house and your car and your woman and your man and your bank account. And that's fine and good. You'll get that. But first, let's get delivered first. Amen. They're going to tell you about how you're going to get the Rolls Royce and all that. And God don't have a problem with it. But let's get delivered first. Amen. They're going to tell you about how the cattle on a thousand hill belong to you. And that's true. It does belong to you. But let's get delivered first. Amen. Amen. Let's know that we 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 know that I'm saved. That we know that we know that I'm delivered. That we know that we know that I got victory in my life. I may have some struggles every now and then. And my God, today I'm talking to somebody hear me right now or somebody on the internet. I don't know. You may have some struggles in your life and not know how you're going to get over it, how you're going to get through it. But know this, my man and my woman, the Lamb has prevailed. All you got to do is cry out to God and say, God, help! I'm in trouble! Help! Right now! And God says, I will answer your cry. That's what it is. What the word says. Say amen. Amen. Too many times we have beaten ourselves up. Too many times we have put ourselves down. Too many times after you made a mess up, a slip up, and I'm not preaching weakness today, but I'm preaching the truth today. Too many times we have messed up and put ourselves down and cut ourselves out. And God says, son and daughter, why don't you get up? You're not on a mandatory eight count, but get up right now. You may have messed up last night. You may have messed up last week, but the lamb has 
has prevailed. And let me tell you something. It's not just about getting in the flesh, but sometimes we can mess up in our mind. Our mind can go buck wild and crazy. Sometimes we can give place to imagination and start thinking things that we ought not to think. Not less for thoughts, but off thoughts. We can start thinking things and assuming things, and we can start getting presumptuous and start doing different things. And God says, baby doll, just begin to cry out to me, for the Lamb has prevailed even in that. That's why the Word of God says, cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. God's got all the bases covered. If you mess up in your flesh, he's got you covered. If you mess up in your mind, he's got you covered. If you mess up in your soul, he's got you covered. Every part of life, the Lord has you covered. That's why you don't wear your stuff no more. You give your stuff to God. You don't hang your head down, but you lift your head up. I'm a child of Zion. I'm a child of the light. I'm not in depression. I'm not in oppression. Yeah, I'm not what I should be, but I'm not what I used to be. I'm not what I need to be, but I'm on my way. Clap your hands and say amen. Can I read this? Say amen. St. John chapter 1. And he says this. The next day, John seeth Jesus. A prophet seeing another prophet. Because Jesus was prophet. Priest and king all rolled into one. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him. And saith, behold. Everybody say, behold. behold. That means look out. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John sees him coming and says, oh, stop it all. Everything, stop right now. There he is right there. That's the one that takes away the sin of the world. That's the one that was slain before the foundations of the world. That's the one that in his shed blood, we all going to be saved and redeemed. That's the one that my life is in his hands. That's the one that healing is in him. That's the one that deliverance, deliverance is in him. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The sin is unbelief. The root of every sin, ladies and gentlemen, is unbelief. Now, I don't care what it is. It starts off as an act of unbelief. It's not, the, we look at the manifestation. We look at the cigarette. We look at the lie. We look at the person tripping. We look at what they did. But the root of it is unbelief. No matter what it is. He said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. But the root, a reason why a person falls, either in their mind or in their body, it's a result of unbelief. Somewhere along the line, they stop believing God. They give place to their imagination. They give place to their mind to wonder. And so they start unbelief. And he said, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin, not sins, but sin of the world. The root of it is unbelief. And when you know the Lamb, you don't have unbelief. That's why the man said, Lord, I believe. Ha, shata, bo, shata. He was being honest, but help my unbelief. I believe you're the Lord. I believe you're able. I believe you're capable but help my unbelief and when your back is against the wall and when you're struggling in your mind you need to say Lord I believe but help my unbelief right now I want to be victorious I want to stand I want to live right but I'm battling in my mind right now that's why you have to take up your weapons of offense and your weapons of defense and say I'm not going down like that I'm putting on the helmet of salvation I'm lifting up the shield of faith I've got on the best pair of righteousness. My loins are guarded about in truth. My feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel. And in my hand is the sword of the spirit. Clap your hands and say yes. What I'm telling you today is right. The lamb has prevailed. Look at somebody say the lamb has prevailed. I remember when I was a little boy. There used to be, there'd be fights, and people would get in the fights, and they would say, who won the fight? Who 
only one. In fact, I was in a few of those dust ups myself. I know that was probably in more than me. But they were in the fight. And they said, who won the fight? They wanted to know who prevailed. But there's something about this fight. We already know who prevailed. Uh, you understand? Back when boxing was real, and they had Hagler and Sugar Ray, and they had Hearns, and they had Larry Holmes, and they had Ali, and they had Foreman and Frazier, and all those. This stuff now is a joke. But back when it was real, and they had real battles, those men would get in there and pound on each other until somebody succumbed to another person. And you didn't know who was going to prevail in some of those cases. You was, you, but you was glued to the TV because you wanted to see who's going to prevail. Well, the Bible has told us, and the Bible says let every man be alive and let God be truth. The Bible tells us that the Lamb has prevailed. It's not a question, is he going to make it? It's not a question, is he going to do it? But he has done it. The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. It's not, is he going to do it? But when is he going to do it? It's not, can he do it? He's already done it. It's not, might he do it? He's done it because he has prevailed. Clap your hands and say amen. Stay in St. John chapter 1, 36. And let's see what the Bible says. A small verse. And it says, and looking upon Jesus. That's why just look at Jesus. Look at somebody say, just look at Jesus. Stop looking at your circumstances. I feel like preaching now. Is that all right? Amen. Don't look at your stuff, but look at Jesus. Yeah, he told Peter, he said, why are you looking at the winds and waves? Just look at me. Why are you looking at the circumstances? Just look at me. 36 says, and looking upon Jesus. Now the Bible says in the old book that he was nothing to look upon. That means Jesus wasn't tall, dark, and handsome. Jesus wasn't, didn't have a beard and have a six pack and chest like this and walked around and I'm the man. Amen. The Bible says he was nothing to look upon. That means he was an average dude. He didn't look, we know they paint the picture and blonde hair and blue eyes and all that. And he's tall and he's handsome and his hair is groomed, his beard is groomed and all that. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says he had hair like lamb's wool. The Bible says he was not anything you would even think twice about looking at. He was nothing to impress you on the outside. That's why God is more important about the inside than the outside. Y'all can catch that one later on. And that God is more concerned about the inside than the outside. All these folks looking for, well, I want my woman to have this and I want her to have that. You better make sure she got something on the inside because after you get through rubbing and greasing each other down and all that, you still got 23 hours and 30 minutes left of the day. What you gonna do the rest of the time? And all that other thing, y'all don't like my talk, but it's the truth. Amen. Everybody wants a trophy man and trophy woman. Everybody want the fancy car. Everybody want the nice house. And everybody want the nice this. And the Bible says Jesus came into Jerusalem on a bald donkey. The Bible says that Jesus didn't even have a place to be born in. He was born in a manger. And yet and still, he was the king of kings and lord of lords. What does that tell me? That tells me that it's not based on the outward stuff. It's based on the inner stuff. I'd rather have all of God on the inside and be looking top on the outside than be looking put together on the outside outside and be have dead men's bones on the inside. Let me be whole on the inner part and worry about the outer part. Know that. Say amen somebody. Yeah. All right. Let me say what we say with verse 3 and 36. And looking upon Jesus as he walked he said behold the Lamb of God. He's the Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. You and I got salvation because he saved us. Turn it to Peter now. And let's see what the Bible says. We're almost done. We're almost done, but I want you to understand the Lamb has prevailed. Say amen. amen. Looking at too many things. Looking at what everybody telling you. You know, I'm about to be tired of this, this, this political stuff. I, I, I listen to it. I watch it. But that's not my focus. It's not. It just when one group gets the upper hand, the other group comes back and does something else. And then one person says something, then another one got something else to say. And that's fine. I watch it. I listen to it. I talk about it. But I'm worried about what did Jesus say? When it's all said and done, has the Lamb prevailed? Because this world is coming to an end. Amen. They're going to fight and keep arguing and carrying on, and that's fine. But I want to make it to glory. What about you? If that's the case, say, I want to make it to glory. I'm not looking to hang around here. I'm looking at my home that's in heaven. Say amen. All right. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. 
Verse 19 says this. But with the precious blood of Christ. Look at somebody say his blood was precious. But with the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb. Without blemish. And without spot. Perfected. Absolutely perfected. Who verily was foreordained. Before the foundation of the world. What was manifest in the last time for you. Blood perfect. Everything. And it was manifest. Now watch, look at this last part. It's the point when I heard when I read this last night I almost shouted. He says, but was manifest in the last time for you. In the last time for you. Already shared, but for you. Put your finger at yourself and say, that's me. But manifest, what manifest means to be revealed for you. That means right now, even though I might have a struggle, it was manifest for me. Even though I may have an issue, it was manifest for me. Even though I may be on the mountaintop and I don't have no issues, it was manifest for me. Is that in the last time? Does the Bible say last time? Does it say for you? Then that's including you right there. It was manifest for you and me right now. Even though this was 2,000 years ago, it yet is manifest today. That's why you're not guilty. Look at somebody say, I'm not guilty. I might blow it, but I'm not guilty. I may slip and trip a little now and then, but I'm not guilty. The devil read in Revelation where he's the accuser of the brethren because he's still trying to accuse you of stuff you're not guilty of. Y'all catch that one next week. He's trying to make you guilty of stuff and make you think stuff is real. Don't you know the devil know how to paint a picture in your mind? Oh, you know you're you just messed up, you know. You know you're still a liar, you know. You know you're still this, you're still that, you know. You know you ain't never going to get healed in your body. How many folks have ever been sick? Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand. Raise your hand right now. Look around, look around, look around, look around. And then in your mind, in your mind, now don't raise your hand on this part, but in your mind, you thought for a brief moment, you know what, I ain't never going to get healthy. I ain't never going to get over this. This is always going to be this way. But the Lamb has prevailed. The Lamb has prevailed. Yes, I am going to get over this. Yes, I am going to walk again. Yes, I am going to be made whole again. Somebody can say something to me right now. Yes, I am going to be whole. Yes, I am. I don't care what my struggle is. I don't care where, I, where I've messed up, what I've done, how I've done it. Yes, I am going to be prevailed. If the Lord did it and it was manifest in the last time, that means he's got it in reserve for me. You might not want yours, but I'm on mine. Yeah, you may not say, I don't need that. I got it all together. No, I want mine. Because there may be some stuff. And I'm not just talking about sin. But there's some stuff that I, I still need God to help me with. There's some errors I still need God to bring me over. There's some things I still need God to stand with me. And you need to understand something. The Bible says a man's ways look right in his own sight. Amen. But when you take a self-evaluation of yourself, you begin to see, I got a little flaw here. And God, I need you to help me. God, I got a little issue here. And God, I need you to help me. And if I don't have any issues, God give me more strength. God give me more victory. The Bible says in Acts the fourth chapter that after they had whipped Peter and John, they told him, don't go out and speak in this Jesus name no more. What did they do? They went straight to the church, told the people and prayed. They said, Lord, give us more strength now. <laughs> give us more boldness now. Just got through getting whooped. Just got through being told to be quiet. But now, give me more strength right now. Even if you got it all together, Lord, give me more right now. Lord, I need more strength now. Lord, I need more victory now. Lord, I need more power now. Lord, I need more faith now. Lord, I need more joy now. Lord, I need more and more of you now. You can never get enough of God in your life. Say amen, somebody. Lord, I thank you for what I got, but give me more and more, God. God, I'm hungry. The Bible says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. And I'm sorry, when a man is hungry, when a woman is hungry, when you're desperate and desperate, and you been going through dry places. You can't get enough water to satisfy you. And when you've been going through it, and now you're in an oasis, you don't say, God, that's enough. You say, no, 
Lord, give me more God, more God, more God. I never can have enough God. Lord, I need you in the noonday. Lord, I need you at midnight. Lord, I need you in the afternoon. Lord, I need you when I wake up. God, I need you when I'm at work. God, I need you when I'm in the commute. Lord, I need you when I'm in the shower. Lord, I need you when I'm cooking dinner. I can't get enough God in my life. I may be shouting now, but I can't get enough God in my life. Clap your hands and say amen. Last scripture. Ezekiel. Last one. Last one. Last scripture. I love it. Hallelujah. That's why God's got to be your motivating factor. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? God's got to be your motivating factor. You can't have can't nothing else be your motivator. God's got to be your motivator. Money can't be your motivator. I tell people all the time, particularly brothers, if a woman could answer all your problems, then why those men that's been married to Holly Berry end up getting divorced? One of the most beautiful women ever to walk this earth. Gorgeous. Why has she been married three times then? If a woman can answer your problem. Some of those women has been married multiple times. If a man can answer your problem, then why have they been married so many times? If a car can answer your problem, why people got 15 and 20 of them and 30? I'm a collector. No, you're looking for something. You're looking for something. If these earthly things can answer all your stuff, then why are you still searching for something? Because you haven't met the lamb that has prevailed. When you met the lamb that has prevailed, all your needs are satisfied. All your needs. When you have met the lamb that is, you know, the lamb is sweet. So even when you don't have nothing, you're still happy as can be. Even when you don't have a lot. You know, folks, when the slaves were singing songs or whatever, them songs wasn't songs as I'm going through. Them were songs of victory. They didn't have a whole lot of Bible. They didn't have a whole lot of God. Excuse me. They didn't have a whole lot of Bible, but they had a whole lot of God. They may not have been able to read or write because Master wouldn't let them have the Bible and they would have to steal a little page of the Bible and then somebody would have to guess at what the words would say. But because the heart was so right and the heart was so hungry when they were singing them songs, they were singing glory to the key. Even though they was under oppression, they were still singing glory to a God that they had not seen, a God that they could not touch. You need to realize something here. Amen. You got a man, you give, you're doing hard labor and you're not getting paid for it and working in the hot sun but yet you singing songs to a God that you cannot see a God that has not delivered you from that bondage that's when you know that you know that you know that God is a good God right there uh -huh, uh -huh. that's when you know it right there that's when you know no it ain't based on what I, what I got we ain't got but a can of beans and you know, you know chilling the reason why folks eat chillings is because that's all they would give them to eat was the chitlin part. They didn't give them the better part in the animal. And so they learned how by revelation to make a meal out of the worst things. And pig's feet and chicken feet and all that. We look at that and go, ugh. And, all, and I'm not a fan of it. But they, God taught them and said, well, if this is all you got, I'm going to teach you how to make a cuisine out of something that's a reject from somebody else. <laughs> that's why God don't matter what it is. God will teach you how to be content. <laughs> Whatever state you in, we ain't got no Big Mac hamburger. That's fine if you got rice in the cupboard. God will teach you how to make it great. We ain't got no uh, no what's that, habit burger. That's all right if you got a noodle. If you got peanut butter and jelly, it'll be a gourmet meal because you're full of God and you're not looking. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right now. Amen. But you need to realize something: the more people get, the less God they want in their life. The more things they have, the less God they want. The more money they got, the less God they have. And when you go have nothing. People have a tendency to want God more when they got less. And when you cry out to God and you get in love in God and enamored in God. Can I talk to you today? Amen. And you get excited about God. You don't have a problem when they say it's church time in the middle of the week. You're like David said, I can run him when they said unto me, come let us go to the house of the Lord. I'm excited. I done worked hard all day. 
I didn't work in the, in the 50s and the 30s that, that most of the, um, the, the folks of color, amen, they were confectionaries, they were cooks, and they cleaned other people's houses, and they did hard labor work, and what have you. And then back then they would do seven day a week revivals, Monday revival, Tuesday revival, Thursday, and the church would be packed out with people, and they worked hard washing other people's drawers or whatever. But they came because there was an excitement that God was going to show up and meet them. And there was miracles in the church and deliverances in the church and healing in the church because there was an excitement and an anticipation of what God was going to do. Yes, they were oppressed people. Yes, they suffered. But the glory of God manifests itself like never before. Well, why are you talking about just the African people? Well, let's look at the Hebrews back in the book of Acts. Amen. When they was going through it, they was under persecution by the Romans. They could get killed for saying the Lord. And yet and still, the miracles were there. The power was there. The joy was there. They said, we love not our left life unto the death. And they blessed God and ran and gave God glory. Clap your hands and say amen. Y'all don't like my talk. Hold your finger in Ezekiel. Turn it to Acts real quick. I'm going to show you something. Turn to Acts. Real quick. I need to show you this. To show you how you can be full up of God. Let me show you this. You just be oversaturated with God. And, just, and God just, 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 just do some great things in your life. Amen. Watch this. Uh-huh. Where is that? Where is that? Where am I? Hallelujah. Somebody say help the preacher. I'm looking for Stephen. Where is he at? In his axe. In Stephen. Eight. Somebody said eight. Eight. Is that where he at? That's Philip. I'm looking for Stephen. Wait a minute. There he is. All right. Thank you. Verse there he is. There he is right here. Let me read this to you. 754 says this. In fact, let me start in 51. And then we're going to go to Ezekiel. Let me show you how you can get full up with God. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, do you also resist the Holy Ghost? As your fathers did, so do ye. 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. 53. For who have received the law by the dispensation of angels and have yet not kept it. You done got all this and you still don't listen. Now watch this. 54 says this. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they ganished on him with their teeth. In other words, they bit him with their teeth. But, whoo, 55. But he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Now watch this, 56. And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Now watch this. Hold it. Stop reading for a second. Stop it. He said, I see in heaven. And now he starts to talk to them after they're already biting him. Now he's talking to them and telling them what he sees. Now look what happens in verse 27. Then they cried with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul, which actually was Paul, 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, they stoned, stoned him, uh, and, and verse 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, 60. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when they heard it and said this, he fell asleep. Now here he is. They bite him. They jumping on him. And then, in the midst of it, whoa, I'm about to run right now. I really am. In the midst of it, I don't know if you've ever been bit by a human bite. A human bite hurts. 
they bite the man and all these things run on him and then when he said oh I see heaven open they get more angry more angry because he said I see heaven opened and they close the ears and then they come and jump on him some more they already done bit him now they jump on him then they grab him throw him out and now they stone him but he was so full of God somebody saying I ain't that deep yet <laughs> well you better get that deep because the day is coming he said, they stoned him, they didn't bit him, and he ain't feeling no pain. That's because he was deep in God. He ain't feeling no pain, not at all. And he said, Lord, forgive him. How many of us can say forgive him after they hit you in the head with a rock? <laughs> Let alone bite you. How many of us going to talk about Lord, forgive him? They didn't mean that plop. Lord, forgive him. They don't mean plop, plop, plop. Lord, forgive him. No, we're going to be able to hold on here. You, wait a minute. I'm going to get a rock and do some throwing too. And no, but he was full of the Holy Ghost. See, he had met the lamb that had prevailed. <laughs> he had met the lamb that had prevailed. And when you meet the lamb that prevailed, you get full of the Holy Ghost. That's why people can talk about you like a dog. They can put you down. They can talk about your people. They can talk about you. They can make fun of you. And they can even do some ugly things. But the Bible says, pray for them that despitefully use you. And bless them. The Bible says, take your coat off. If they need a coat, you give them your coat because you've gotten, you've met the lamb that has prevailed. You've gotten full of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I said it 20 minutes ago. When you get full of God, you can stand in the midst of the fire. You can stand in the midst of the trial. You can stand in the midst of opposition. People talking about you. Most of us, don't you talk about my kids. You can talk about me, but don't talk about my kids. That's a lie because if they say something about you, you ready to fight. Amen. If you find out they lie on you, you ready to fight. When you find out your coat Work alive, what did you do? You went to them and said, Why you say that? I didn't say why are you lying on me like that. That means I ain't deep enough in God yet. Yeah. Well, you say, Lord, pray for him, Lord, help him right now. <laughs> you say, No, why are you lying on me like that? You gonna do I'm gonna lose my job, I'm gonna do that. No, I ain't got deep enough in God. God allowed you to lie on me to push me closer to him so I can pray for you and get you delivered. Because the closer and the more of you I get, the more agent of God I become, the more power I've got, the more anointing I've got, the more God is in my life, then I can stand and tell the devil, you need to stop right now. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you today? Amen. Got one more scripture to read. Does that bless my socks? I've been hitting the head with a bowling ball before and seen stars. So I can imagine what it's like getting hit in the head with rocks. Can you imagine? You got some pretty hair too. Can you imagine getting hit in the head with rocks and somebody biting you and then you're going to say, Lord, forgive them. And then they're going to start hitting you with rocks because you say you see God. Not because you say anything about them. I just see God. And now I'm getting more angry now because you said you see God. That's because the devil was stirred up in them. That's why. And when you get closer to God, baby, I'm going to tell you something. The devil going to get stirred up. You think it's you. He think it's something you done. No, it ain't nothing you done. You just got closer to God. That's all. You didn't do nothing. You just stepped on the wrong. I remember, I remember when I was in the military, we went to some dancing club. And, and, uh, and somebody stepped on one of the guys. I was with one of them, stepped on his foot in the dancing floor. And he said, the girl looked at him and said, ain't you going to say excuse me? And he's like, you stepped on my foot. Why I say excuse you? Why should I say excuse me? You stepped on my foot. She was looking for something to start up some mess. And when you live right and live with God, people are going to do things to you and expect you to apologize. But guess what? Go ahead and apologize. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? All right, last one, Ezekiel. Last one, Ezekiel. And then we're going to go eat. Last one. 39. Did I, did I call it out to y'all yet? 39. Hallelujah to Jesus. 39. And 8 says this. Behold, it is come and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day. Wherefore I have spoken. Behold, it is come and it is done, saith the Lord. The Lord God, this is the day whereof I have spoken of. I have come and it is done. I have prevailed. I have shed my blood. 
I am the lamb that was wounded, that was torn, that was broken. I have come. I did what I was supposed to be, do. It's done. And now it's finished. And so now you need to rejoice in it. I've paid the price. I've done everything I needed to do. So I've redeemed you. I've been you back from the devil's lie. I've been you back from the pit. I've saved you. I've thrown a lifeline out to you. It is done. It is finished. It's not going to happen again. I'm not, that's why I'm not an advocate of crosses. If you want to wear one, that's between you and God. But God is not on no cross no more. It is done. He has been wounded. He has been broken. He has been shed his blood. He's not doing it no more. And now we are the benefactors. We are the redeemed. We are the ones that are free. So why am I going through things? And why am I suffering? Thinking that it's going to happen all over again. It's done because the Lamb has prevailed. He's already won his battle. And now the victory is ours. That's why we have the victory. This is the victory that overcometh our faith. Amen. This is why we have victory today. This is why we are more than conquerors. This is why we can stand and say, I am free because the Son has made me free. This is why we can lift our hands in the midst of the fire. This is why we can shout. This is why we can give God praise because the Lamb has prevailed. The Lamb has overcome. He did it through opposition. He did it through lies. He did it through betrayal. He did it through rejection. And now man and now woman of God, it is your time. It is done. It has already come. It has happened. It is finished. It is over. It's done now. So lift, lift up your hands and lift up your head begin to bless God because it is done now it's not a thing of tomorrow but it's right now he told Zacharias this day look at somebody say this day this day it is your day this day has got my name on it not tomorrow but right now this day is my healing day this day is my deliverance day this day is my shout day this day is my breakthrough day. This day is the day God turned it around in my life. It's not what it used to be no more. It's not what it was yesterday. This day, the Lamb has prevailed. And now I shout now. I praise now. I give God glory now. I'm looking at my circumstance. Don't look at your stuff, but look at what the Lamb has done. Don't look at your problem, but look at the Lamb. Don't look at where you live. But look at the lamb. Don't look at what's going on. But look at the lamb. The lamb. The lamb. Ah, the lamb has prevailed. Touch somebody and say the lamb has prevailed. Come on, touch somebody and say the lamb has prevailed. Come on, give a high five and say the lamb has prevailed. The lamb is not going to prevail. The lamb might prevail, but the lamb has prevailed. It's your season now. Begin to shout your shout. Begin to dance now. I'm going to wait till I get my check in the mail. Don't get your check in the mail, but shout now. Don't wait till the battle's over, but shout now. Don't wait till the deliverance happens, but shout now. Don't wait till you see it with your eye, but shout now. The lamb has prevailed. The lamb has prevailed. The Lamb has prevailed. The Lamb is in your life. The Lamb is in your footsteps. The Lamb is moving through you. The Lamb has prevailed. No matter where I am right now, the Lamb has prevailed. Clap your hands and say yes. If you believe it, shout yes. 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 yes.
because this is a sign of victory. When you come through this prayer line, you're going to wave whatever you got over your head. If you don't have something, I'll give you something. Because the lamb has prevailed. Look at somebody say, the lamb has prevailed. Say, I'm not a slave to my own mindset. But the lamb has prevailed. Say, I'm not a slave to my body. But the lamb has prevailed. Say, I'm not a slave to my circumstances. Because the lamb has prevailed. Now, when you come through this prayer line, you're going to wave your victory over your head. Because this is a victory of rejoicing. This is a prayer line of victory. Because the lamb has prevailed. He's not going to prevail, but if we're going to, he's prevailed already. This time we're going to come up to the pool, but I want you to line up right there, right now. Come on. Right now, right now, quickly. Everybody, come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want you to make a line right there.